Hi everybody. Today I wanted to take a look at the program catalog for the TRS-80 color computer. Um, I'm going to be looking at it in a PDF. I actually have mine uh, right in front of me which is actually in better condition than the one that I have there but uh, I couldn't figure out a good way. I don't have a tripod for my camera and I it just it just didn't look good so I figured I'd do it with the PDF. I, I know some people like seeing the real thing, so I was trying to go for that, but uh, it, it just wouldn't have looked well the way I was doing it. If I had the right equipment, it would have been better. So this program catalog, this was something that I had when I was a kid, and this program catalog drove me nuts because we didn't have a lot of money. I had my color computer, I had some, some games, but going through this program catalog, I wanted every single game that they had, uh, which was not something that was going to happen for me. Um, so it was kind of torture. So I just want to go through and have everyone take a look at all the stuff that's in here if you're interested, and maybe it'll bring back some memories for you. Uh, or you're seeing it for the first time and you're finding it interesting. Uh, excuse me, I just got an email for wine to go, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, front of the catalog, uh, this is actually the Color Computer 1. Uh, I actually had the Color Computer 2 for my first computer. And the game on the screen is actually Math Bingo, which was one of the ones that I owned because uh, my parents bought it for me so I could learn things, educational, uh, which I'll have to do a review of uh, Math Bingo. I uh, probably frustrated my mother because I would just, uh, there was no penalty for getting it wrong, so I would just zip all over the screen and I could click on it faster than you could manually compute the answer. Uh, but I'll do a review on that uh, another day. And um, there's a bunch of great games in the background. Skiing, I have a video on skiing and uh, uh, the pinball game is terrible <laughs> um, and uh, Polaris and Project Debula I never had so I'll have to uh, check them out and see how, how good they are. Alright, so let's start flipping through the catalog here. So you're about to discover why your TRSA color computer is fun that never stops something for the whole family, a great educational tool, and expandable. An adventure just beginning. So experience the excitement and challenge of playing action-packed video games. It's like having all the thrill, spills, and chills of a coin-operated arcade right in your own home. Uh, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Um, if you've seen the graphics and heard the sound on the, the color computer, especially the color computer one. Uh, something for the whole family. Flip through this catalog and you'll see programs that let you keep a budget, set up a household inventory, analyze investments, file and update recipes, solve problems, write themes and reports, store and retrieve data, access up to the minute news and current stock quotes, make a home handyman's work easier, and much more. Kids can learn to type, sharpen math skills, compose music, even improve reading. Get our Learning Lab package and everyone will be writing their own programs with color and sound too. Add more memory uh, and advanced basic language for high resolution color graphics, disk drives for greater data storage, and to use powerful disk programs, a printer, and more. Yeah, it all sounds great. It was very good marketing on behalf of Radio Shack. And to to a large extent, a lot of that a lot of that was true. Uh, probably the only thing that's uh, the least accurate in here is that it's like having a coin op in your home. So here's Project Nebula. You're in control of a starship cruising the universe. Fiendish aliens are all around. If they destroy you, the Earth is next. Punch up your long range sensors and enter hyperspace to search out targets. Get them in your sights and fire away. Use your maneuvering skills to rendezvous with the home space station and renew your power. Four levels of play, 10 levels of difficulty, unlike any other space adventure. Sounds pretty cool. 
looks like first person flight simulator space combat simulator sort of thing I might have to definitely check that out don't particularly remember looking at that one I'm sure I did I dreamed about all these games uh, and that one doesn't jump out in my mind but probably the screenshot I was like when I was that young I was like that looks really complicated Polaris a reign of terror is about to begin so it's a missile command uh, clone and yes this one I remember looking at and really wanting to play um, that's probably because I played missile command in the uh, arcade or my friend's house or on something but I knew that was that was one I had played and was really interested in playing that and getting that 30 bucks never never got it I would get maybe uh, two games a year um, that was kind of my my parents quota for me you know maybe one for my birthday one for Christmas maybe an extra in there if I was lucky clowns and balloons Follow the bouncing clown um, this one I don't remember uh, wanting too badly um, you know, it looks kind of goofy but you know it could be a good game uh, definitely have to do a review on that one and try it out space <laughs> space assault my daughter's uh, uh, fighting my wife going to bed in the background if, if you hear that uh, space assault defend earth from aliens attacking I'm sorry attacking aliens um, space invaders clone this I definitely wanted uh, and I didn't get this early in uh, my uh, ownership of uh, Coco uh, but I did eventually get this one and um, you know it was it was okay it wasn't a great port of Space Invaders um, it, it was average I would say um, and I, I'll probably do a review of that one I still have this one actually uh, for my Coco so if I can get my act together and shoot it on a TV maybe I'll do that for you guys and I know there's a lot of people out there that like like seeing the original hardware and the original game uh, so I want to at least try to get a couple a couple of those videos in for things that I actually have um, Microbes wipe out deadly globs of bacteria. Hmm. I don't remember this one. It sounds really interesting. Again, I might have thought it was too complicated when I was a kid, but now I definitely want to check that one out. I'll have to do a review on that one. Some gameplay video. Fifteen levels of difficulty. Increase the challenge. Let's see, while peering through your microscope, you make a dreadful discovery. A deadly plague is beginning to spread. No one is immune, not even you. This probably came out uh, uh, available fall 82, so way after Andromeda Strain, <laughs> uh, the movie. Uh, that's a great movie, by the way. If uh, you've never seen that, I would suggest checking it out. No one, even you. Quick, the antibiotic spray is your only hope. Oh, thank God there's antibiotic spray. Uh, but the bacteria is too strong, Spil splitting apart again and again each time you spray it. Antibio or antibiotic resistant bacteria. Wow, this is an eighty before eighty two. They kind of knew what was going to go down. Uh, but don't give up. The germs uh, growing weaker. Hurry, more spray. Got it. And uh, now for the others. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to give that one a try. In another video. Uh, Galactic Attack. Um, I'm surprised I don't remember this one. I always like space things, but uh, shoot the invading enemy spaceships. I uh, yeah, don't remember. Maybe it's like a Galaga clone or something. Um, yeah, it looks cool. I have to check that out. If you destroy a squadron of eight ships, the enemy reverts to a special night attack. 
your video screen changes to an ominous color. But all is not lost. Hmm. Yeah. Looks interesting. Oh, shooting gallery. Shooting gallery. This is one. I guess I liked shooting gallery things. I remember this one as a kid. I remember looking at this and really wanting shooting gallery. Um, you get, uh, see, the carnival beckons, flashing lights, happy music. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the shooting gallery. Hit, hit the moving targets, owls, ducks, rabbits. Faces, got to shoot some faces. Uh, rectangles yeah, and, and diamonds. Uh, you gotta gotta murder some rectangles, each worth different points. Watch out for those watch out for those faces. Hit them when they're smiling at you, and <laughs> and your score. Uh, but hit a frowning face. Oh, and it's no score and a wasted bullet. Okay. Oh, now I feel bad for making fun of it. That totally makes sense. Um, uh, it even puts another rabbit in the game. Uh, just one of the one of the surprises, my friend. You get ten turns. Uh, I really wanted this one as a kid. I remember looking at this and really wanting this, and I, I never I never did get this one. I'll have to uh, get a hold of that somehow and give it a try. Super bust out. So this little uh, Arkanoid clone. Um... I'm, I think this was just directly by Tandy or Radio Shack, and uh, yeah, it was okay. Uh, I actually uh, had this one. If I if I remember, it was um, the paddle moved really fast. Maybe I, I don't remember. Uh, it was okay. I, I don't remember really loving this version of uh, Breakout, but um, I did play it and played it plenty. So. Um, Popcorn. Now this I read on other reviews is a really popular game for the color computer. A lot of people really like this and uh, this wasn't one that I remember being interested in and it's also one that I have, haven't tried so uh, but it's a, it is highly rated on the Coco so I will have to give that one a try. Good old popcorn. I'm not going to read all these. I figure you can pause the video and check them out if uh, you're interested in reading. Ugh. Okay. So, I, when I was a kid, I really liked sports games. I actually had color baseball. I had color baseball for the color computer. And I loved pinball machines. And these two games, boy, they suckered me in. And so here's just the description. Pinball. You're a pinball wizard. Talk about realistic. You can even bump and tilt just like real pinball machine. Hit the circle poppers and uh, knockouts for points. Design your own uh, customized play field for a faster, more complicated games. And with Accept Recorder, you can save your board designs on tape to play later. So kind of a good concept, but the, the pinball on this game was like literally a dot, just a small dot. And, um, yeah, I guess it bounced around okay, but just, it was just pretty, pretty boring. And, you know, I didn't feel that it was a, a really good representation of, of what pinball was. And, um, yeah, although I have to say I, when I was a kid, I, it was, it was fun. I, I played it. Um, a lot of the games, pretty much all the games were fun as a kid, uh, but only some hold up over time. Uh, like double back and um, color baseball. I still like enjoy playing color baseball, uh, but pinball and football, uh, they don't really hold up. Uh, not not at all. Um, the 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 football game was just. Um, I'll have to go back and play that one to to sort of remember. But I remember like you would kind of pick plays and then like you, your quarterback, you couldn't even move around and stuff. You would just pass and. Yeah, it, it wasn't, it was just a poor implementation of football. Uh, baseball was uh, far superior. 
um, and then even tennis and uh, it's, uh, was okay tennis tennis is pretty weak but it was it was at least passable and fun um, and then skiing was great uh, but football no I, I can't really recommend that game but I'm gonna review it anyway Quasar Commander uh, that is one that I didn't play, but it's definitely one that I wanted. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember really looking at this, and also uh, Dino Wars, both of these games. Uh, I really I would just stare at the catalog and look at this page. And uh, never, never tried Quasar Commander. Uh, I did end up getting uh, Dino Wars, and uh, Dino Wars was actually uh, uh, pretty pretty terrible but uh, <laughs> again when I was a kid it was lots of fun uh, so maybe it doesn't bode well for Quasar Commander but we'll have to give that one a try looks like a uh, another first person space combat type kind of thing so you're at the helm of a starship shooting through space on a seek and destroy mission use the autopilot to lock in on enemy scouts battle cruisers or decoys then take command and fire laser beams. Home in with rad uh, with radar option. You have complete speed and maneuverability controls. Ten levels of difficulty. Sounds pretty cool. And I have a video uh, on my channel for Dino Wars if you want to check it out. It's it's, uh, it's actually pretty funny. Uh, not not that my video itself is funny, but the the gameplay of the game is is funny. I won't uh, claim that I myself uh, make it funny. It's more the more the game. Um, skiing. I actually have a review up for skiing already, and uh, this is a great game uh, for the the color computer. I also had it on a television, and uh, I really liked it a lot more on the color computer when I was a kid. I, I felt that the implementation was a lot better uh, than the Intellivision. Uh, Wildcatting. This was one that I uh, I remember wanting, and uh, never actually never got this. So I'm gonna have to uh, grab that somewhere and and give it a try. I remember that one. Uh, Color cubes is a Rubik's cube a video game. Hmm, I don't really remember uh, too much about that. If that was something I. I really want it or not. Can't say that I remember looking at this one in the catalog. Uh, and Micro Painter. I was never never too much into art or drawing pictures or anything like that. So I don't really remember looking at that one either. Man, 40 bucks for drawing uh, in uh, 12 colors. <laughs> if anyone... Uh, watching this has used micro painter and has pictures of artwork you did please post it post a link that'd be really cool to see art gallery express yourself in color each display tape includes 12 scenes man did i did you know what i i might have i might have actually had this at one point um what my one cousin actually worked for Radio Shack and you know at some point late in the Coco's life they they basically threw out all the stuff and he brought me home a giant box full of Coco stuff which I I freaked out about and I I might actually I might have actually had this in that in that box of stuff um so I think I remember loading up some of the sample image pos a images, possibly. Hmm. Uh, chess and checkers. Um, I wanted both of these, uh, and I was never, you know, fortunate enough to get them. But um, I like chess and I like checkers, and I would I, I always thought it'd be fun to play against the computer, uh, or if my friends came over to play against them on the computer versus the board game, which I guess didn't really matter, but back then playing on an actual computer was, you know, a really cool thing. 
uh, Roman checkers and uh, backgammon. I don't. I'm probably saying that wrong. Backgammon. Backgammon. Right? Yeah. Uh, when I this was not games I was introduced to in my family as a kid, so I, I don't particularly remember uh, being interested in checking these games out. But uh, now it could be pretty fun. I might want to check them out. Bridge Tutor. <laughs> I, th I think I actually have this uh, <laughs> uh, as a cartridge uh, currently. And I can't say that I remember the last time, if ever, that I plugged it in. It was part of that uh, uh, dump that I got from my, from my cousin. Um, I probably, when I got rid of a lot of my stuff, I probably tried to sell it on eBay and never, never bumbled it with something. I don't know why I still have that. Because I don't remember, I don't really remember playing it, but I do have that. Uh, crosswords. Yeah, I was a kid. I remember wanting that. Now, Pyramid, Raka 2, and Bedlam. These were text adventures uh, on the color computer. And I actually had Bedlam as a kid. I didn't have Pyramid or Raka 2. And I wasn't interested in them because I when I tried to play Bedlam, it was... It was too difficult for me. I mean, I was very young. So 82, I was five years old. Um, and when I got this, I didn't, I didn't really know what to do. Uh, so um, I remember kind of having a dislike for it and never trying the other two. Now I have read some online information uh, uh, where people say Bedlam is actually pretty good. And then at least Rocket 2, maybe both of these, uh, you know, people kind of said stay away from. Uh, but Bedlam might be worth checking out. So maybe I'll do a, a video where I try to solve Bedlam, which I probably won't. Um, but we can cheat because we have the internet. Which would be amazing. Uh, bingo math that I had. My parents got that for me because uh, it was educational. And I said at the beginning of the video, I would just fling my joystick all over, clicking like crazy, and, and would go fast. I would beat my mother when she was trying to actually solve them. She was trying to, and I, I think I remember her, me telling her, like, why don't you cheat? And she said she wanted to do the math because she was probably trying to get me to do it right and learn some, some math. But, uh, oh, my poor mother. Uh, music. Um, I actually uh, played a saxophone as a kid and knew how to read music. And I think I remember uh, asking my parents for this one, or at least being interested in this one. Uh, so ever wonder how Bach or the Beatles did it? Get our music program and t try your wings as a composer. You don't even have to be a musician. Just follow the easy instructions, and soon you'll be writing melody, harmony, counter uh, counterpoint. Save your favorites with cassette recorder. Maybe they'll be a hit. Um, maybe they will. Now there's an 8-bit music scene, right? Uh, probably not back then. They wouldn't have been a hit. This program, let's see. Uh, does it say the date? But, you know, we'll say the other one said coming in 82. So maybe this is, here, let me look at my manual, my catalog I have here. Uh, oh, my catalog actually says uh, copyright 82 on the back. Um so 80, 82, so uh, 92, 2002, 2012, uh, 15, so 33 years. So 33 years ahead of its time. People would probably be uh, interested in the music now. Uh, sorry, whoever made that. Uh, typing Tutor. Uh, did I have... I'm, I might have had, had this, and uh, when my parents didn't get, get it for me, I think it came in a drop from my cousin. And, um, yeah, I never even tried. I don't think I even tried it because I, maybe I plugged it in and tried it once and don't even remember because I wasn't interested in learning how to type. I wanted to play games and write programs. Didn't even think that, hey, I could write programs faster. That wasn't a thing. 
So typing tutor, sorry. Uh, audio spectrum analyzer. I wonder if this had an external piece of equipment that you had to hook up. Uh, test your audio equipment. Color bar graphs show power distribution over nine octaves and uh, one third octave segments from 31.5 to 12,500 hertz or just enjoy a kaleidoscope of dancing patterns. Cassette cable, mini amplifier, microphone needed for some features. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, not something I would have known what to do with at the time. So I, I probably didn't think about that one too much, but I'm sure for uh, people into audio, uh, that would be really, really interesting back then. Personal finance and investment analysis. Yes, I definitely was asking my parents for these at six year, you know, six years old. Uh, no, obviously I, I was not uh, interested in these programs. Um, but maybe just for fun, we should check them out on another video. See, investment analysis, tremendous help to both the novice and experienced investor in analyzing personal investments. Great for comparing various financial offerings, easily figures interest, loan, amortization, retirement needs, stocks and bond yields, uh, save and cassette tape to review or update. So I guess you put in a, your loan information and it creates an amortization table for you or something. Hmm, that could be fun to check out. You know, doing a budget. Um, I'm sure uh, both of these would be easily replaced by Excel uh, or a basic spreadsheet, but um, we could check them out. And also we could check out a spreadsheet on the, the Coco. That could be fun too. Oh, I actually, I did check out a spreadsheet on the Coco. I have uh, a video about Deskmate uh, for the Coco 3. And uh, uh, it was years and years later. Uh, and that actually has a pretty sophisticated spreadsheet on it. Um, but maybe we should check out an older spreadsheet for, you know, Cocoa 1 and Cocoa 2. Um, color file. Say goodbye to cluttered drawers. Stuff with addresses. Oh, it's a card file. Uh, warranties and personal records. Color file lets you quickly and easily store, retrieve, and use information. Alphabetize, examine, print, or change your info, and save to tape with a cassette recorder. <laughs> Could you imagine an IT support person uh, going to, uh, you know, some elderly person's house and they just finally got a new computer and like, I have all my uh, addresses and everything on this audio cassette from this program for my color computer. Can you, can you help me get that into my uh, Windows 8 machine? Yeah, I'm sure it's probably happened. Um, handyman. Embarking on do-it-yourself home improvements, lawn projects, just feed in measurements and handyman will tell you how much lumber, paint, insulation, fertilizer, sand, gravel, etc. you need. Helps you compare prices too. What? I'm not sure how that was useful back then. Man, I guess you just had to feed it all the information for it to do things. Wow. Man, thank God for Google, right? I don't know. Uh, we'll check. Maybe I'll see if I can find that and we'll check it out. But um, ugh. I can't imagine that being too helpful. Spectacular. Time-saving planning tool. There is a spreadsheet for the Coco 1. And, uh, you know, ergo Coco 2 and 3. But, yeah, more basic spreadsheet. In fact, the... I remember from the spreadsheet on the Coco 3 for Deskmate, it was uh, 20, I'm sorry, 10 columns, 20 rows. Uh, so this looks like you're getting less than half the visible section of the spreadsheet. And uh, for that one, you had menus and everything. Uh, this one looks like it's sort of command, you know, keystrokes and things. Um, do your planning, forecasting, problem solving with this electronic worksheet. Just enter numbers and formulas. 
spectacular calculates and displays the results automatically. And our new figures and updates every related number features up to 99 rows and columns. Wow. I wonder if it only had like one sheet. You can add headings and labels and erase your worksheet while leaving the format and formulas intact. Print your worksheet or save it on cassette tape. Hmm. I think we're going to have to check out Spectaculator. Hope I can find the manual because there's no way I'm going to know all the uh, command keys to work that thing without looking at a manual. Color scripts it. Low cost word processing. Um, you know, that's kind of an interesting thing back then. Uh, I, I did like a Coco uh, retrospective and, and sort of talked about it, but I didn't really do any word pro I, I word processing or printing on the Coco because no one would accept dot matrix printouts. If you, because they looked really poor. And if you had to do a report for school, they wanted it typewritten. So we actually, I actually had a modern computer, modern, modern back then, and printing abilities, but no one would accept anything. The, they wanted it typewritten because it was looked more professional. So yeah, I remember sitting on my couch with a typewriter on my lap, like it was my, like a, people would be with a laptop and I'm, you know, with these big hammers while my computer's sitting in the other room. How silly was that? Uh, color scripts it. Word processing puts an end to erasing strikeovers and messy correcting fluids. Oh, sorry, I just whacked my microphone. Uh, type in and edit your letters, themes, and reports right on the TV screen. Then print them correction free. It's easy to insert, delete, move, duplicate words, sentences, even whole paragraphs. Includes advanced features like text search and replace too. Output upper and lower case to printer. Requires cassette recorder for text storage and printer. Yeah, tell that to my Catholic school teacher. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, St. Paul's. Could have been using my color computer. Um, wonder, you know, I'll do some hardware overviews, but uh, saving to cassette was really interesting because, again, you know, I was super young. And saving to cassette, you would have to, there's a little count, number counter on your cassette. And you, if you had a file on there already, let's say you had a file from 10 to 17, you'd fast forward to 20. And then if you're going to save something else, you'd, you'd save it and it would, might save from 20 to like 32. And then you'd fast forward to 35 and you'd save something else, you know, from 30, 35 to 47. To load something, you'd have to load in the, fast forward or rewind to the blank spaces between those files before you load it. So you had to keep a manual ledger of the counter for where all your files were. Um, and that was how he did it. And that is why I have no sympathy when I see a young kid and they're like, I don't know how to save to my flash drive. And it's like, uh, you know, when I was six years old, I was keeping a ledger and saving to an audio cassette. So yeah, sorry. Figure it out yourself. Um, so that was really mean. Man, am I bitter or what? You know, now you know how old I am. That's what happens when you get old, you get bitter. Sorry, it just happens. Uh, TRS-80 video text keeps you up to date. Uh, video text is like having a newspaper delivered right inside your color computer. You get access to news services like CompuServe, Dow Jones Retrieval. They bring up to the minute news day or night. Major daily papers, current stock market information, reference material, electronic mail, uh, games, and even workplace for programmers. Uh, all for a low charge includes one free hour on both services. Requires modem. So this must have been a sort of a Telnet terminal type program. And you had to get a modem to hook it up to. Uh, I never networked uh, my color computer connect to bulletin boards or anything like that. I didn't do that till I had a IBM PC. Uh, it was a, a 3 to 6 SX when I first got that with 2400 baud.
um, yeah, kind of missed out on on that. I yeah, I didn't I didn't have um, anyone else that I knew that had a computer. I was the only out of my friends, all my parents' friends and families. We were the only ones that had a computer, and I didn't find out till years later about uh, Rainbow Magazine or any of this other stuff, users groups, those things. Uh, and by that time, I was pretty much ready to move to an IBM PC. Um, so I missed out on a lot that way. But I did do a lot of programming on my on my Coco. Learned a lot of basic programming and stuff. Card games. Blackjack, Solitaire, Poker. Hmm. I probably wanted that. I don't really remember that, but I probably did. This king looks kind of creepy. Um, diagnostic ROM. <clears throat> Make sure your color computer is in tip-top shape with this diagnostic program. You can test basic and expansion ROM, RAM, video, RS-232, cassette, and printer ports. Sound and keyboard just for fun. The joystick lets you test paint the screen with dual cursor in four colors. Optional equipment may be required. I think I got this from my when my cousin dropped me that stuff. I, I, I might have tested that. It might have been just one of those things I plugged in once and then that was pretty much it. Editor, editor assembler with Z, Zbug. Um, this was actually, I believe, a really popular program for the Coco with people that were writing their own programs in assembler. I did a lot of programming in basic. I never got the uh, assembler machine language stuff or learned any of that. I didn't do the, any of the pokes and went into the programs to hack them and and those sorts of things. Um, again, I probably would have if I would have had someone that could have guided me a little bit, but on my own, I never uh, delved in that deeply. Reading is fun series. Uh, your child learns through reading, listening, and drill. Packages include an illustrated reader, read-along audio cassette tape, and a computer tape, which presents spelling and vocabulary exercises based on words in the story. I did not have any of these. I probably didn't show my parents this page. <laughs> Although the stories look pretty cool. They shouldn't have made it sound so educational. Because, uh, yeah, these stories look great. Uh, maybe we'll see if I can find these things. Classic tale of the horrible vampire Count Dracula, his evil deeds, and his final destruction by Dr. Van Helsing. Yeah, looks cool. 20,000 Leagues, Moby Dick. Man. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, that's, a, that's some good stuff. Oh, the Learning Lab. Uh, the best, most complete, hands-on programming course we've ever seen. You'll learn standard color basic on your computer. Uh, the, the, the computer actually came with a wonderful manual that went through into great detail programming in basic. So I think I just worked through, worked through the manual when I was doing this stuff on my own. Each program teaches you something new and provides a game to apply what you've learned. There are 22 programs discussed in 30 lessons, including 200-page manual and eight cassette tapes. That's what the quarter required. Hmm. Yeah, I bet you that was really, really good information and really interesting. I just learned, learned with the book. Expand for added versatility. So upgrade your 4K color computer to 16K. So 32K was the max for the Coco One. And then color computer joystick controllers. I had the ones for the Coco Two. They did not have these silver sticks. They had just black plastic sticks. 
Um, joysticks give faster, more realistic action to many games. Use joystick instructions in your own programs too. On-screen objects can be made to simulate 360 degree movement. Each has a single shot button. Easy hook. Add disk storage to your color computer. I actually did have the floppy expansion module. So that would go in where you would put one of your program packs. And then you could run programs off of floppy. And I had, um, see if I can remember some of my floppies. I had Seamus, um, Pegasus and the Phantom Riders. Uh, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. Um, I've done a video on Pegasus and the Phantom Riders. Um, I have not done one on Seamus. I'll have to do one on Seamus. I wish I could remember what else I had on there. I had lots of stuff. It was, you know, I really regret. I sold a lot of stuff for my Coco uh, over over the years, and I really regret uh, selling selling my stuff. But I didn't think I was ever going to use it again. And needed money for starting my life with my family, and had this one bedroom place, and I had a wife and a kid, and I just sold everything. And uh, then I got nostalgic, and I want it all back. I want it all back, and I want my stuff, <laughs> not some other, not somebody else's stuff. Off of eBay, I want my stuff back. Um, yeah, so be careful what you sell. Careful what you sell. Although it's not good to be a hoarder. You shouldn't keep everything. You know, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Probably did the right thing, selling all that stuff. Um, color scripts it. The more powerful ver version of our color script, oh, disk edition of our color scripts it word processing program. So it's just a more advanced word processor that ran off of floppy. And Spectaculator disk version. Much larger planning and forecasting. Calculation automatic, including add printer and get a listing of any portion of your worksheet. It's so easy to learn. Hmm. Wonder what was more sophisticated with the floppy version. So much larger, I'm gonna guess. The other one was 100 by, you know, 99 by 99 cells. Maybe this one was more, um, but they don't say. That would have been good for them to advertise. Coming soon, filing system on disk. They kind of had that program, right? That was one that we read up, early, up there earlier. Uh, oh, on disk, so on floppy. And the assembler on floppy as well. So they're just moving these to, to floppy. Uh, and there's the printer. Good old tractor fed dot matrix. Oh, yeah. Too bad. None of my teachers would take dot matrix printouts. Thanks a lot. It's just ahead of the time. Uh, use this handy checklist and add to your what? Your color computer. <laughs> oh, add to your library of software. Uh, let me look in my actual manual. That was they must be side by side. I bet. There I go, making fun of them again. Yep, yep, on the actual one, it's the pages are just right next to each other, so it makes complete sense. And let's see if the PDF has the back cover, because it's pretty cool. Oh, they sure do. So it shows some of the games there. Uh, all the ones looks that we went through. Uh, it also shows these really cool binders. Um, I had binders like this for my Atari 2600 too, and I had them for the 
Radio Shack where you could put in program packs and also Radio Shack binders for uh, cassettes. You would open these up and you could put your cassette tapes in there and everything. Um, and I actually had Radio Shack binders uh, with uh, sleeves for floppies. So they were just kind of like what you would do for baseball cards, so like a three ring binder kind of thing. So I had these little binders for all kinds of stuff. Um, at least I think they were all Radio Shack. I remember opening them up and seeing tapes and stuff. So, um, yeah. So that is the program catalog for your GS80 color computer. I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane looking at some of these programs with me. And maybe when you were a kid or maybe even if you were a little bit older, you did the same as me and kind of looked through and imagined all the great fun you could have with all these neat programs if you only had the money to buy them all. <laughs>